In this video, we'll learn how to use the Issue Navigator in Jira. Now, the Issue Navigator is probably one of the most fundamental views in Jira. And I say that because it's probably been around the longest. When we looked at the calendar view, for example, we learned that's a newer view. The timeline, which used to be called the roadmap, is also a newer view and so on. Well, the Issue Navigator has been around pretty much since the beginning of Jira. Of course, its layout has changed quite a bit since then. So let's start by getting familiar with how it's laid out. So along here at the top, we have filters, a lot like what we've seen in the other views, except here in the issue navigator, these are a lot more powerful filters. We can see all the different things that we can filter by. And we're actually gonna look at these in a lot more depth in our next section, because this issue navigator view is something that we'll be using heavily in company managed projects. But when we filter, use the top to filter, this, is the list of issues along the left side. So if we wanna look for just the stories, we can see that now it's filtered one of 23, just the stories. We can even minimize the left side menu to see that a little bit easier. Then over here, the bulk of this view is showing the fields within the issue. So we learned in the last section that fields live on issues and these are all the fields that live on each of these issues. And one reason why the issue navigator is so powerful is that not only can we see the fields here, we can find the issues, see the fields on the issues, but we're gonna be making a lot of changes to the data held by fields. Uh, for example, if we wanted to change this summary, we could just go in there and type it and, and do it. This is where we're gonna make a lot of these changes to these different issues. And of course, we can update any of the fields on the issue. But there are a few things here that can be easily overlooked to help us work more efficiently. First, we have our comments by default, but we also have the all activity, we have history, and we have the work log. So the comments are pretty straightforward. The only thing to point in out here is that you can mention users. So if we tag somebody, then what that will do is send them a notification up here with a link to this comment. Then we have the history. Now in the history tab, we can see any of the changes that have been made to the issue. For example, if we were to reassign this to someone else, we're gonna assign this to Ethan. Now that will show up in the history. Might need to refresh there, there we go. We can also see the work log. So by default, there's not automatic time tracking in Jira, but any user can add the time that they've worked on the issue to show up here. So if we wanna say, you know, maybe we spent an hour building the initial functionality, and we can see that show up here. So now that we know what these three are, this all activity makes a lot more sense. It's basically these three activity items in one log. Now over here on the right side, we have the fields on our issue that we can update. Again, this is pretty straightforward, but I wanna point out that because we are an admin on this team managed project, we can control the fields right here without going to the project settings. If I click on this little gear, we can create a field find an operating system and, oh, oh, that's field type, drop down. I was typing it in the wrong field. <laughs> there we go. Creating the field and then we can add in the option since it's a drop down, just add a couple. So we can see, you can see Jira is automatically saving this. So now we have this field added to our issues. And if this is a field that we use a lot, we can pin this to the top to make it easier to find. And not only is it going to be pinned on this one issue, but any of these issues. Now, if you remember from our first video in this section, we learned that the fields in team managed project are project scope entities. That means that this new field is only going to be in this one project. And we'll look at how we can create fields that are used across multiple projects in Jira because that's how company managed projects work. But in our team managed project, this field exists on all of these issues here that we can see. 
Now, the last thing I want to point out in this video has to do with being able to quickly hop to the overall field management that we saw in an earlier video. So if we did want to get rid of this field, we can come down here and configure. And that will show us this view that we've been to before. We can find this field, drop it off, save those changes. And now if we go back to the issue, now that field is going to be gone. Oh, looks like it didn't take me back there. Let's go back to our project. And there we go. Yep, that field has been removed. Okay, so to recap, in this video, we learned how the issue navigator is organized. We learned how to update fields, see the issue history and activity logs, as well as how we can create and manage the fields on the issues right here in the issue navigator. Now, we didn't get a chance to talk much about the filters up here. But these filters work exactly the same in the team managed projects as they do in the company managed projects. So instead of repeating the same information twice, if you wanna learn more about finding and searching for issues in the issue navigator, we'll be covering that a lot more in the company managed projects section of this course. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.